Guys, so uh, we're here with Dr. Dimitrios Karousis, uh, who we tracked down today after he gave a really interesting uh, presentation on his work with mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, so Dr. Karousis, why don't you start out just giving us a brief, uh, you know, 30,000 foot explanation of your, of your work. Okay, we, I think that uh, we start from the concept that uh, uh, the best treatments in general in medicine are those that uh, mimic what is inside our body. And the only existing mechanism for regeneration in every tissue of, of, of our body is with the stem cells. The adult stem cells which reside in every organ, including the brain. That, uh, and probably this is the mechanism of uh, repair uh, after a relapse of multiple sclerosis. But still, it's not enough. That's why the accumulation is, um, uh, the, the disability is accumulated. So what we did, we just want to enhance this mechanism by taking the biggest source of stem cells in our body, the bone marrow, isolating a type of cells, not those that produce the blood cells, the hematopoietic, but another small population, which is called mesenchymal stem cells. And then we expand them and we produce them in a different, uh, in our unique culture, in order to produce cells that they secrete neurotrophic factors and other factors that are good for the brain in order to um, induce the survival or to enhance the survival of the uh, damaged nerves in multiple sclerosis. So what we did, we did not use any external donors, but each patient was the donor of himself or herself. We took from his or her bone marrow, the mesenchymal stem cells, and then we inject them intrathecally into the spinal cord, the spinal fluid, by a regular procedure of uh, lumbar puncture. So uh, we noticed that uh, after uh, six and six and 12 months of these uh, two cycles of treatment, uh, uh, clinical trial with uh, 48 patients, that there were indeed not only good results in terms of prevention of the progression, for this we have good medications uh, already, but in terms of improvement of disability, which is uh, probably one of the main functions of uh, stem cells. Yep. And just to point out to the audience, uh, there's a tremendous amount of data here at this conference. And uh, as, as was mentioned, there's a lot of good treatments that stave off disease or, or delay progression. There's been very few things presented at this conference that really have as robust of an effect on uh, improving the disease state. And that was a really comp compelling aspect. Uh, you, the, one of the other things I really noticed about your presentation was that there was a significant improvement uh, e with using the intrathecal, but the, the intravenous seemed to work as well. Um, what do you, do you, do you think that, are you, are you inclined to think that the intrathecal is the, is the therapeutic route that is going to be the most beneficial, or is there an, the potential that because the intravenous is going to be potentially more easily standardized and, and widely replicated, that that might be good enough to be a, a more a, a reliable or, or potentially mm -hmm. easier path? I think that there are two different uh, mechanisms involved in uh, when we inject the cells intravenously or intrathecally. And we can see that it was uh, interesting that uh, all these stem cells, including the mesenchymal stem cells, they have immunomodulatory effects, which means that they can suppress inflammation. So this is good uh, for the peripheral inflammation that induces a relapse in multiple sclerosis. And, and this is the mechanism of uh, intravenous injection of mesenchymal stem cells. Sorry, so you were saying that it, the, it, the intravenous has a, has a suppressive effect on the, on the immune cells in the, in the blood? Yeah, exactly. So it works kind of similar to many medications in terms of suppression of inflammation and prevention of the relapses or the progression of disability. However, what is the major unmet need in multiple sclerosis is to find a way to suppress inflammation inside this, this slow ongoing inflammation inside the old lesions in multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. in progressive disease and find a way to regenerate. So by injecting the cells intrathecally, and I'm not surprised by this difference that you mentioned in, the, in this clinical trial, we bring the cells closer to the damage mm -hmm. so we can uh, induce different effects, not only suppression of the local inflammation, but also neuroprotective and neurotrophic effects. That's why it's logical to my view what we saw and the advantage of the intrathecal approach. 
So I know that our audience is, is somewhat familiar with another stem cell therapy, uh, the hematopoietic stem cell therapy, um, which has also been presented at this conference to have, uh, you know, show a lot of therapeutic potential. Uh, could you uh, explain for us some of the distinctions between the mesenchymal approach versus the, the HSCT? I think that the only common uh, between the two approaches is the, that they come from the bone marrow, the cells, and they are called stem cells. All the other things, the concept is completely different. Mm -hmm. The hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, which is a good procedure, by the way, I was very much involved because this is a part of my PhD work 30 mm -hmm. years ago. Oh, wow. uh, about, uh, and I believe in this kind of therapy, but it's mainly a suppression of the immune system to the extreme, mm -hmm. so we can rebuild and reconstitute the immune system. Uh, that's why it acts, what actually works in the hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is the conditioning made, uh, treatment before. Mm -hmm. So before we, we give these stem cells, we destroy the immune system, destroying also the autoimmune cells that produce multiple sclerosis. So we hope that with the reconstitution of the immune system after the hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, these new uh, cells will not have the autoimmune potential to uh, cause disease and attack the myelin or as in multiple sclerosis. So this is a concept that works in, with suppression of the immune system with strong chemotherapy. In mesenchymal stem cell transplantation, we uh, do not need any suppression of the immune system. The cells work completely different and they just are injected and suppress locally the inflammation. And I, I think there's a strong argument to be made that as a result of that, the mesenchymal approach is a safer approach. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we, this is the third clinical trial we, we did. This one was a double-blind randomized study. And uh, in total, in all these 200 patients that were involved, who were involved in these three trials, for more than six or seven years now, we do not have any, zero side oh. effect. Wow. Except in some initial headache or fever due to the injection, the intrathecal injection. Yeah, and that, I'm assuming that lasts days. Just for weeks. three days. Or yeah. So, so uh, that's an interesting point you bring up. Uh, do you have any thought on what the duration of benefit might be? And is that a result of persistence of the cells or is, does the conditioning effect uh, uh, pass, on, pass on even as those cells don't, are, are kind of moved on? Yeah, you, you're touching a very, a very important issue because still, even when, when we inject stem cells, they oh, will not survive right. forever. Mm -hmm. So they actually die in a few months or whatever. Interesting. Uh, in our study, we had a, a certain group, half of the patients treated after six months with a second injection. Mm. And the results of this second injection were much better than those with only one injection. Interesting. Which means that probably the effect fades down after a few months, maybe six months or a little more. And then when we boost this with another injection, it could be better. Interesting. Is there, I'm not, is there any risk to the repeat intrathecal delivery? And if so, is there a potential to combine the intrathecal with potentially IV down the road to avoid the need for serial punctures? Uh, I think that uh, there's uh, some logical, uh, some logical in uh, doing this kind of combination, uh, but I don't see any major um, risk for the repeated intrathecal injection. Uh, of course, uh, except of the fact that it's a lumbar puncture, yeah. which is not uh, so uh, nice for the patient always. But uh, maybe, yes, it, there, there could be a combination with intravenous, intravenous administration and with other immunomodulatory sure. drugs. I do not see that this treatment will replace the other treatments, mm -hmm. but it can be an additional way in order to attack not only the immune cells that, and to prevent the relapses, but also induce or enhance immuno uh, regeneration of the myelin. So I, I, one of the things that's really stood out to me at this conference is these approaches have been talked about for decades. Um, I remember when I was in grad school, we were talking about the potential of these treatments. And here we are getting actual clinical trial data demonstrating real world efficacy of these, of these approaches. I think one of the things that stands out to me is that we still have this problem of, they're still referred to as stem cell therapies. And I think that especially for the MS Translate audience, that can be potentially problematic because I, I feel that there's a bit of a predatory aspect of, of uh, private companies out there that are labeling therapies as stem cell therapies um, and selling in the kind of like common commercial market as opposed to going through regulatory. Do you, is that, do you agree with that kind of summation? And if so, what no. would you say about that? 
first of all, I'm very happy, as you mentioned, that uh, uh, from all these ideas became now a reality. But uh, in parallel, as you mentioned, that there is a big story about this medical tourism around stem cells with um, uh, payments, uh, with treatments that are not uh, checked in non-academic institutions, sometimes very risky uh, therapies, so, and where we do not know uh, what kind of cells are injected and how the treatment works. So I agree with you that it, we need, uh, they, they have given a bad name to the whole yeah. thing, area of stem cells. So only after a specific an academic institution can perform a clinical trial, a control study, we can proceed to other uh, treatments and to phase three, and not just like uh, any institution prepares themselves. So this, this could be dangerous and this gives, as I mentioned, a bad name to the whole field of stem cell therapies. So an another benefit that I think is very important with the mesenchymal approach is you don't need the chemotherapy, which is a, as a, has tremendous Absolutely. issues of its own. And as a result of that, it seems to me that standardization and implementation in, at a, at a, in a broader scale uh, will have a lower bar. That being said, what do you see as being potential barriers to uh, global adoption of a mesenchymal stem cell therapeutic regime? I think that um, as, for, as we have for the medications, probably uh, cell therapies will also have the variations. So it would be different types, uh, different products of stem cells with similarities and differences, but uh, it may be that we will not have one universal uh, treatment uh, and the type of stem cells, uh, but different ones. But all of them, each one of them, has to be tested specifically in a clinical trial, otherwise uh, it's non-academic and it's not based. Sure. So you bring up a good point that there's, there, there's room for heterogeneity of the approach. Um, and one of the things I've noticed at this conference is that there has been data presented of far less compelling uh, da efficacy data in mesenchymal stem cell studies. Um, data that's had indications or trends towards efficacy, but not as profound as what you're seeing. Do you think that those are maybe just poorly not poorly powered or perhaps the patient numbers are low and that if they expanded they might tease out better differences? Or do you see potential differences in the actual therapeutic paradigm that are being used elsewhere that your study addresses in a more efficacious fashion? I think that those uh, results presented yesterday from the multicenter study led by uh, Professor Uccelli and uh, Friedman are exa make exactly sense to uh, our findings because uh, their primary endpoint was gadolinium enhancing lesions mm -hmm. and the relapses of multiple sclerosis and the effects were very marginal, if at all. And this was exactly the same observation we had in our trial with the intravenous approach. The problem yeah. in this study is that they used only intravenous administration and that's why it's exactly what we found with this uh, group of patients treated intravenously. And it was so there's no contradiction. It's uh, actually the same result. And it was a smaller patient number that they used as well, correct? Is that, am I remembering that correctly? Um, I, I don't know the details, but I think the number was okay. The problem was the wave of injection and the, t the type of uh, injection and uh, the primary endpoint. Interesting. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations on all the great Thank work. And, uh, you know, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.